Happy Monday everyone and uh, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. This week I wanted to share uh, one of my favorite native ground cover plants, Woodland Phlox, Phlox divaricata. It is a native perennial wildflower um, in Michigan. It's one of five native phlox species and um, it's known for Michigan's lower peninsula and across the eastern half of the U.S. Uh, southwest to Texas and New Mexico. And uh, as far as habit goes, this uh, plant naturally occurs in rich deciduous woods, um, those kinds of forests with beech maple, a little less often in um, oak hickory forest, but they can find uh, moist microsites and you'll find them in places like um, river floodplains or stream floodplains or ravines with the water moving down the slope and being at the toe of slope. So you'll find them in open woods, uh, along woodland edges, uh, along paths, any place where uh, light availability might be um, a little better than like deep in the heart of the forest. Uh, that makes the species vulnerable to disturbance um, because it's often on the edges and um, to invasion by garlic mustard. So more on that invasive species, you can take a look at Monday with Martha number 103. As far as culture goes, uh, this species is great to plant where there's um, dappled sunlight uh, to light shade. I, I won't flower as well if you put it in really deep shade. It likes um, mesic soil conditions with abundant organic matter so well-drained, loamy soils are preferable. You can um, add some compost if you have some degraded soils without too much organic matter. And uh, it's good to plant someplace where there's um, good airflow. It can get powdery mildew. It's not too big of a problem, but um, I wouldn't put it where there are sprinklers hitting it all the time um, and poor airflow. To propagate it, you can do that from seed. You can sow it right away in spring to early summer as soon as the seed is ripe. Um, you can also divide it, um, divide up like rooted portions of the plant in spring or fall, um, or do softwood rooted stem cuttings in the spring or root cuttings in early fall to help spread it around. Um, as far as identification goes on this species, um, divaricata, its, its species name means um, spreading or straggling habit. So it is a loose clonal plant um, and is one of the, the few flock species that has both these fertile stems uh, with the flowers at the end and then infertile stems, these shorter ones here. And so it has these two kinds of stems. Um, the, the infertile non-flowering shoots tend to be less than a foot tall. The flowering shoots are closer to um, a foot, foot and a half tall, and both come out of a shallow root system. The stems are light green um, or can be a red brown color, but they're covered in um, glandular hairs that make them feel sticky to the touch. And the fertile, uh, the flowering stems are hairier than the infertile. The leaves are opposite and they are sessile, meaning they don't have little leaf stalks where they join the stem. And they are hairy uh, with an entire or untoothed margin and they are uh, lance-shaped to elliptic. They do die back after flowering and going to seed, leaving you with the carpet of the infertile um, uh, shoots. And uh, the flowering stems terminate in a loose cluster of um, these really pretty kind of pale uh, purple, lavender blue, occasionally white or pinkish flowers and uh, those flowers are about one inch across they are fragrant 
And the eastern subspecies, um, so they're tubular flowers with five lobes. And in the eastern subspecies, there's often a deep notch at the tip of each of those flower lobes. The um, fertile shoots tend to have a little bit blunter leaves um, and they can actually keep their leaves, be kind of semi evergreen um, into the winter months. So a nice uh, hardworking ground cover for you to include in your um, part shade gardens. So for bloom period, it tends to bloom um, mid spring, sometimes into early summer for about a month. And then the flowers are replaced by a ovoid capsule uh, that has several dark seeds. The, the shallow root systems are stoloniferous, so spreads by uh, shallow stems underground. Um, they can also do layering, so if one of these um, fertile shoots gets pressed to the ground, it can root at the nodes and form this uh, loose carpet, loose colony as well. As far as uh, faunal associations go, uh, this species, the flowers have to be cross-pollinated to produce seed and they offer nectar to some great pollinators, uh, different kinds of butterflies um, and other long-tongued insects. So especially tiger swallowtail butterflies. I saw one earlier today, uh, not too far from my woodland flocks. Skippers, um, hummingbird clearwing and sphinx moths and bumblebees. Uh, the flowers also offer pollen to um, different insects. Uh, like um, bee flies and other bee species. And the foliage um, is eaten by leaf beetles um, and the stems and foliage are eaten by longhorn beetle larvae and the caterpillars of several moth species. Um, and this species is occasionally browsed on by white-tailed deer and rabbits. So as far as using this species um, in the landscape. It is a loose, uh, relatively slow spreading ground cover. It's beautiful this time of year and fragrant. And so putting it in places with um, dappled sunlight, uh, part shade conditions, like I said, good airflow with rich soils. It's a lovely um, border plant. Um, in those shadier spots in your yard. And it's great to interplant. You could interplant it with your spring bulbs. So as the foliage of your spring bulbs um, is senescing, this plant is really reaching its peak and flowering. And it looks really nice interplanted with other native kind of woodland edge, edge species. I like mixing it with, um, I have Canada anemone, so that'll that fills in around it and blooms in June as the uh, woodland flox is finishing up. Um, let's see, wild strawberry. Uh, it's great to plant with other woodland wildflower favorites, ephemerals, um, bellwort and bloodroot and trillium, um, wild geranium and uh, Jacob's Ladder are other good things. And then of course, uh, woodland ferns are an excellent um, associates to, to mix with this species in your landscape. So I hope that gives you some ideas of how you might be able to incorporate this beautiful little woodland wildflower into your own plantings. Take care and have a good week.